Hello, hello, brothers and sisters. Welcome to a new edition of our show titled Speak of Africa. We have another great show for you today, and we hope you're going to enjoy it. Before we begin, as usual, we want to say thank you to all our viewers. If this is the first time you're watching Speak of Africa, we ask you to subscribe to this show. When you subscribe, you receive a video notice of upload whenever we put a new video online. So it's very important that as you are viewing the show for the first time, you should subscribe and also share the show with your friends and advise them also to subscribe. In addition, we want to say a special thank you to all our subscribers. We started this show with a goal of giving you a voice and so far you're doing well. Our subscribers are increasing and we say thanks to you. You're sharing the show with a lot of your friends. Some of you go to WhatsApp and you share and share and share. Keep sharing because that's what would make your voice heard all over the world. Then for our customers, we have a lot of businesses. We thank our customers a whole lot because the money we make from them, that's what enables us to produce this show. So we say special thank you to our customers. We cannot take you for granted. We are always trying very hard to please you and to come up with more services. Now we are getting more customers in the area of healthcare. A few weeks ago, we completed the hosting of a teleconference on healthcare. Okay? The teleconference had to do with telehealth and telemedicine. We have built a new app for telehealth and telemedicine and a lot of our customers are enjoying it right now. So if you have a practice or you have a doctor who owns a practice, if they are not using telehealth, you want to advise them to take a look at our app. Our app is new, is integrated, and it's affordable, and it's also very easy to use. You have pictures of, of our app online. You can see pictures of our app on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, okay? So take a look at it. We are sharing videos. Then you can also go to our website, alexiahtc.com, and you see videos and pictures of what our application looks like. We want to share this with everybody. Then those who are trying to start businesses, we help people to build businesses. So if you have the dream of starting a healthcare business, whether it's a medical practice, whether you are a nurse practitioner, a medical doctor, a nurse, we can really help you produce a business plan because that's really the basis of any solid business. We can help you write your business plan or even if you're interested in handling paperwork like policy and procedures, manuals, we can write all of this for you so that you can start your business with ease. So you can call us 240-350-1131 and we're going to help you to put together a business plan and all the paperwork you need to start your business. It doesn't matter the state in which you are. Right now, we're helping a lot of Africans in the United States start healthcare businesses. Instead of working as a nurse forever and getting chicken change, you need to own your own agency so that you can build the government. You don't need to do anything fraudulent. Just build the government honestly and you make a whole lot of money, big money, okay? So if you need any help, call us. We're gonna help you put together this plan. Now that we've sh shared information about the business that can help you, we are asking you now to take advantage of our news segment. We have a lot of news for you today. How is Africa this week? Well, that's the news of the show of today. When you ask about what is happening, what is happening? We are now under the shadow of the Ukraine-Russia crisis. Africa is affected a whole lot. Mm -hmm you'll be asking why is because most of the superpowers so that the United States and Russia they are using African countries like pawns in the Cold War game now you have Cold War 2.0 and when you look at some of these countries especially like South Africa which is part of the BRICS you know BRICS, BRICS stands for Brazil Russia India China South Africa this is a group of countries that are aligned against the, the West, the United States. So with the crisis in the Ukraine, 
naturally, South Africa is supporting Russia. And you should understand, why is South Africa supporting Russia? It's because of historical factors. Russia, at the time, was U the USSR, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, was really instrumental in helping most of the people in South Africa to fight apartheid. And which is why, after independence, South Africa feels obliged to support South Africa and Russia. South Africa wants to support Russia because Russia helped them in the past. That's really what the game is all about. Okay? And people ask, why is South Africa supporting Russia? That's why. It's because of colonial experiences. During the apartheid era, the Soviet Union trained a lot of uh, the soldiers and the militia that were fighting the, the apartheid government of South Africa. So you can really see the olden days. You can even see pictures of Vladimir Putin with uh, some of the South African uh, ANC party members in those days because they were there to train them in guerrilla warfare and tactics. That's why you see South Africa in, with the president, Cyril Ramaphosa. He's talking to Putin. Some people think he's trying to make peace, but actually he's really <laughs> not somebody who should be making peace because he and Putin are on the same wavelength. So I don't really think South Africa is there to make peace. He cannot really tell Putin what he doesn't want to hear. Mm -hmm. So he is part of the BRICS. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. So this is a, a counterpoint against the United States, the leader of the free world. But before we continue the show, we want to take you to Ambazonia, where we always begin our show. Ambazonia, this week, much of what we see, the fighting goes on. It's always tit for tat. You see pictures of uh, the B guys killing folks in the North West and South West regions. Then the guys too, what, what you people, the people you call the Amber Boys, we call them Restoration Forces, they also retaliate. So it's just like the court of Amurabi. You do this to me, I do it to you. You do it, I do it to you. So I retaliate. So retaliation is just the name of the game. So how long is this going to continue? The national dialogue organized by President Pobia was just a farce. It was not really serious. We think you're going to see a serious national dialogue in the case of Chad. Chad has his people, the ruling junta, and the, the people they call the rebels have a meeting in Doha, Qatar, to try to organize a peace conference. But before that, the ruling junta in Chad had already allowed the members of the rebel groups to have an amnesty. So why can Mr. Bia in La Republic du Cameroon not declare a ceasefire in Ambazonia and grant amnesty to all the parties? Because this is what happens in a country if you really need genuine dialogue. You can see also in La Republic du Cameroon, a lot of the teachers are also protesting. Interestingly, the government of uh, Paul Bia has tried to meet them halfway to try to talk to them and pay them money. By contrast, you don't really see what happened in Ambazonia. When the teachers were protesting in Ambazonia, the BR government sent uh, these uh, B elements to come and beat them. When lawyers went out to protest, the BR government sent these uh, soldiers to come and beat them. So you can see already that the BR government treats the francophones as first-class citizens and the anglophones as second-class citizens. So this is really not fair, but that's what you can see on the ground. When the francophones protest, the BR government does not send the military to run and kill them. By contrast, when the Anglophones are protesting, the BR government sends the military to kill them. So you can already see that this is a tale of two citizens. The first class citizens and second class citizens. The Anglophones are second class citizens while the Francophones are first class citizens. So the story is threadbare. We lay it in front of you, threadbare. Okay? The next. We're going to show you a video in La Republic du Cameroon. These are people who are dispossessed. 
Their houses are destroyed, they are burned, and you can see caterpillars destroying all these homes. You see a very large living area in Douala broken into pieces, and you see the people wailing. This government does not even understand what we call eminent domain. In the civilized world, when the government wants to use your property, they try to compensate you adequately. In the case of La Repubblica Cameroon, you see the people left to their own devices. They are thrown in the streets. Women or children have nowhere to go. We can share the video with you and you can see what is happening to these people. At first sight, one might think this is an area yet to be developed. But no, this is a locality in the economic capital city of Cameroon, Douala, which has been wrecked to soil level. We are at Esenge village in the Douala 1 subdivision, littoral region of the country, where over 2,800 families, individuals, children and animals have been left frustrated and homeless as they watch their houses hospitals, schools, churches, and mosques destroyed after so many years of their investments in this locality. It was unfortunately, they came, the schools, the hospital, the, in fact, all what we had, the churches, everything, they put everything, without giving a, a pin, and you right up to now, we don't even know, look at the whole thing. When mothers are crying, children are crying, everybody's crying, nobody even knows, you know, 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 I don't want picking them. I don't be for here for 20 years. I feel all the places where I, I use my money, I buy ground for fee, the, the lumber. They don't come broke with now. How we, they don't, you see how they so where they don't broke. We sleep now on top of the plank the way they don't broke. For more than 25 years, and all my children are going back to them here. And at the moment, most of them school. The money that comes here, at the moment, I have it. They don't go carry church. They don't go carry church to do. According to the victims, this village had been sold to elements of the seaport and were taken on away without any compensation or relief material. Always, always, there's problem. Some of the refugees have come to many here. I'm lodging them in my house. But look at me now outside. Where am I going to keep them? Where am I, is it how we're going to be treated in Cameroon? Is it how we're going to be treated as orphans? I get my woman, they get trip. I get my woman to my two picking them. I don't know place where assistance and go. So I don't know. Till they said they will give as a transport fare. Not in you know, Make this, make, make this show now the whole quarter. Now, now. The whole quarter, ah, for bush. the whole quarter, they for down. Ah, the whole quarter, ah, no man, no good place to go. So, no, no. It is important to note that some individuals and families have spent the night outside for over five days now while raising hopes high on where to go for shelter. This is true with, 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 with mercy, not as if we are, we are animals. This is really sad, but that's what happens when you have a government that doesn't care about people. And we hear Ferdinand Gongo is going to be taking over this government. They call him now Monsieur le Vice President. We hear he's very, very close to Mr. Bia's wife, uh, Chantal Bia. So he's very ambitious and arrogant. So what are we going to have in a new leader? Because that's the question a lot of the people in Ambazina are asking. When Ferdinand Gongo becomes president, what is going to happen? Well, he's a hardliner, and he is the proponent of the killing of uh, Anglophones. So we think there will be more killing of Anglophones if Ferdinand Gongo takes over as president. So the people of Ambazonia need to wake up and understand what is going to happen. Ferdinand Gongo is not going to be their friend. He's going to continue the war. And the soldiers are going to be on the street killing more and more Anglophones. So we just want Anglophones to be aware of this. If they can do this, then they will really be ready. Then, of course, with the Ambazonians, a lot of them are fleeing the alarms and going abroad. So you have a lot of migrants. In fact, we see some migrants stranded in Europe, in Cyprus, and all those other areas. They're trying to cross because they're looking for greener pastures. Some of them are on video at an airport complaining the way they are stranded, and they are telling people that, please, 
If you are in Cameroon dreaming of traveling abroad in search of a better life, think again because things are not that pretty. You're going to get stranded like us. Take a minute and watch the video and tell me what you think. My brothers and sisters, people will start where the people will know where. So they turn up with kids so here we don't see all the people see. Don't send them back because they don't make ducky. They don't come for here. We no day. They want to for they can to go for Cyprus. We no day. You are the talks are already here today. We no day. We say I can. I don't spend two million four hundred thousand. I don't know a lot of people them. People don't care, people can't live for Turkey. I don't be for Turkey for one week, two days. They don't look at you with sandwich with the one can drink every day. That kind of chop, if you flop, you won't no. be able to chop food corn. No, no, if you flop. If you go, see how to flop. See how to see them for the other side. See. Men man don't talk so they don't be there. You wanna be very, very careful. That people are there for Versailles, not bad people in that. Thank you for watching the video of uh, the Cameroonians who are stranded abroad. Next, we're going to take you to Burkina Faso. Over 11 people were killed in a minefield attack. Why? We've told you that Africa is rich. In fact, the book that we want you to read this week is titled. It's a book by Martin Meredith, okay? It's titled, The Fortunes of Africa, a 5,000-year history of greed, wealth, and endeavor. Martin Meredith is a really fine writer. When you read his book, he's, he stresses the thesis that we've always told you, that Africa is a rich continent. The countries in Africa are rich, but because they are divided into small nation states, they find it difficult to survive on the world stage where there are dominant forces like the United States, China. They don't, cannot hold a candle. So Martin Meredith's book is a book that is very voluminous. It takes you through the panorama of African history from the days of the pharaohs. Look at what is happening. You see the players, when they talk of wealth, Africa has wealth. In fact, that's why we took the title of our show from a Shakespearean play titled King Henry IV, where the character Pistol speaks of uh, speak of Africa, of golden joys. Africa was known like a land of gold. These guys came and stole minerals. The lure of minerals, that's what brought most of the Europeans to Africa in search of all these natural resources. And of course, you had big time players like Cecil Rhodes and King Leopold of Belgium. So these are two of the biggest characters. In fact, Cecil Rhodes is like a colossus. You see him striding from Cape Town to Cairo, is <laughs> on the map of Africa. He strikes it like a colossus, okay? So these are big time characters. So this book really tells you the way Africa is rich, but you have a lot of greedy personalities. Some of them are dictators. So it's a really good read. I know it's very, very voluminous, but you can take your time and just read the book in bits. We're gonna share the book with you because you see exactly that there's wealth in Africa. Same thing in Ambazonia. There's a lot of wealth, and this is what is driving the genocide in this part of the country. Interestingly, this week, the U.S. lawmakers, again, have exposed the genocide in Ambazonia. You have Karen Bass, Ilan Omar, and Sarah Jacobs. These three U.S. congressmen have been sharing, shedding light on the, the genocide in Ambazonia. So the world now is focusing on Ukraine. But they forget that people have been killed in Ambazonia now for over five years. And of course, the people in Ambazonia are rising up. They are attacking their sponsors in the diaspora, the people they call the warlords. People where they concentrate for diaspora, diaspora go fuck with now without condom. Now kill us. When the driver go kill the one, you deny. They go use money for kill you too, for replace you. I they talk because I be case study and know all that diaspora people. Diaspora, where they cause confusion. Una mami pima. Na me talk. I say una mami pima once more. You have a picture of some of the warlords, the people they believe have been benefiting from the Ambazonian Revolution. These are people who just want to make money, but they don't really believe in helping their people on the ground. So they, they are just like profiting from the war. You see their pictures here too. So from here now, we say, Burkina Faso will continue having 
strife because there are minerals and people don't really know who killed these 11 uh, uh, personalities in cold blood. We suspect it's just a conflict between the jihadis and the government. Even though Damiba is the new leader in Burkina Faso, there is still chaos in that part of the world because people are still fighting for resources. So Africa is wealthy and the people are fighting for this wealth, according to Martin Meredith in his book. Okay? This is a very good read. It's very voluminous. I will ask you take your time to read this book bit by bit. Of course, Central African Republic is also in the news. The people there are jubilating. They want to fight for Russia. And of course, why wouldn't they fight for Russia? Russia is liberating them from the clutches of uh, France. France has been stealing their resources forever. Now they've just replaced an, an old master with a new master who is also stealing their resources. Vladimir Putin is not a saint. He sends his Wagner group to come there, and much of what they are looking for are minerals. They give Ashange to Adera protection. In return, he gives them the resources of his country. And that's the calamity of Africa. Africa is rich, but you have foolish leaders who care only about their self-interest. They don't care about the interests of the people or the country. They sell the country because they want to stay in power. And that's the tragedy of Africa. We like what is happening in Chad. At least the military junta is not really a good uh, government. But we like the fact that Mohammed Debi Idno has decided to sue for peace with the people he call rebels. These are his brothers and sisters. He's organizing a peace conference. He has already decided to provide amnesty for all the people who committed any crimes. So this is a peaceful sign and a positive sign. Why can this not happen in other countries? We are challenging La Republic of Cameroon to do the same. Instead of talking about fake dialogue, let them do what Chad is doing now. They are sponsoring this conference in Qatar, Doha, Qatar, okay, which is a country in the Middle East. If the African Union were a powerful force, they would have been the ones to host this peace conference. But the African Union is weak. It's a useless organization. It cannot really do that. Okay? Hey, yo, Shay, I thought you was going to take me to this place so I could get my taxes done. You know I'm trying to buy a new house. What's up? Let's get it on. If you're searching for a house, call up my man Prince O'Jone, the best in real estate. Take it from your guy's shape. When I say his services are the best in the state, where he's born, he even take care of your tax forms, back refunds. So come, get your business done. Consultations, financial organization, fast processing, no waiting. This man is amazing. The Prince. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. So from Chad now, we go to Ethiopia. Yes, now we're going to take you to Ethiopia. The Ethiopian story is a viral video which shows the forces of Abiy Ahmed burning a guy in Tigray alive. This is a very, very sad video. We're not going to show you the video. We have the video. We're not going to show it to you because we think it's very, very sad. You can see the forces of Abiy Ahmed burning a guy from Tigray alive. This is their own brother. They are making fun while they are burning this guy, they are making fun. So this is not something good. They are making fun of the guy and they are burning him alive. While the guy is dying, they are enjoying the sports. So we don't think this is something positive. We think this is really a negative thing to do to a brother. So we don't really know what Abiy Ahmed is thinking, but we really tell the world that this is not a good sight. When we watch the video, we're really alarmed because the guy was crying, screaming and crying, screaming and crying. So is this a good way to treat a brother? We don't really think so. So we just think Ethiopia needs to hold their leader accountable. The way he's treating these people, killing them, is not fair. We know all is fair in war, but war still has rules. We have to treat others in a, a kind way, because you have rules of, of war, rules of engagement. You cannot just be brutal and, and callous. So this is not good. 
Next, we want to move to Nigeria. We've covered a lot of stories in Nigeria in the past, and we have more stories to tell you today. The first piece of news that really reached us while we got into the studio is the release of Sunday Igoho. In the past, we've been talking about this freedom fighter. He escaped to Benin, and he was in prison over there, so he's been in prison for a long time. So finally, we heard that he's been released. What's going to happen? We hope he doesn't come to Nigeria because we know how diabolical the Buhari government is. If he returns to Nigeria, we are sure he's going to be arrested again or he may be killed. So those who love Sunday Igoho advised him probably to go to Germany and, and, and rest for a while because the Buhari government is not a good government. They're going to want to kill him. We've seen what has happened to other freedom fighters in Nigeria. Take, for example, the founder of uh, Sahara TV, Shoure. What has happened? They're always arresting him, always arresting him, and he's not going to be free. Then also in Nigeria, you can also see that the heat is on, the campaign is on. It looks like the APC is having their convention on March 26. So what's going to happen? Already Mr. Buhari is telling his party members to stop uh, backstabbing, to be professional, so that they can focus on electing a candidate for the presidential elections. So who do you think is going to be the candidate? In fact, there are already many aspirants, but of course the most uh, prominent person that everybody knows is uh, Mr. Bola Tinibu. In the past, we've been telling you his uh, disappointments because he wanted Mr. Buhari to endorse him right away, but Mr. Buhari has refused to endorse him. So this has been creating some friction, but he has gone out and he has been telling the youth, please don't be president now, wait, let me become president first. After eight years of ruling Nigeria, then you have your time to rule Nigeria too, okay? So this is not really a good thing. In a democracy, how can you already predict that you're going to rule the country for eight years? How do you know that you're going to stay there? So which means you've already fixed the election, you know you're going to win. Even if you lose, you declare yourself the winner. So this is not really a good sign. And of course, there are other aspirants, like you have uh, the VP of Nigeria. He is also a contender, and we understand he's one of the boys of uh, Bola Timbu. So what's going to happen? So is, is Mr. Osinbajo actually going to run for president or not? So we are just watching the tea leaves. As time progresses, we're going to tell you of developments in Nigeria, who is going to be able to win. We'll let you know. But already, the people are campaigning <laughs> behind the scenes, even though they may not be saying much in public, but a lot of campaigning is going on. So the North still wants to maintain power. The South wants to take power this time. So they believe that the power has been in the North for eight years. Now it has to return to the South. But will this happen? That's exactly what inquiring minds are asking. But before we leave Nigeria, we want to take you now to Kenya. Kenya also is an example where you have two brothers who have been fighting. In 2018, they sued for peace. This is Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta. These are two guys who have fought each other. Then finally, they decided to make peace as brothers. Their supporters could not really believe it. They made peace, and now they are working together as brothers in unity in unison, Uhuru Kenyatta is supporting Raila Odinga for president. So Uhuru Kenyatta will be succeeded by Raila Odinga. These are two powerful countries. Of course, you, you know the Kenyatta family. Jomo Kenyatta is the hero who led Kenya to independence. But Odinga Odinga was also a very powerful force in Kenyan politics. These are two people from, and you know their tribes, and you know how tribal politics plays itself out in Africa. So we are just happy to see that two guys who have been fighting each other have decided to make peace for the sake of their own citizens and their people, so that people can live in peace, so that they can focus on building a new Kenya. And we're also happy because these two guys are not fighting each other anymore, so that means their followers are not going to be fighting. So. Uhuru Kenyatta has already endorsed Raila Odinga. But why will Mr. Buhari 
not endorse Bola Tinubu. Bola Tinubu's complaint is he did everything possible to make Mr. Buhari president. When it is his turn, Mr. Buhari is playing games, playing the game of the ostrich. So when are we going to know who Mr. Buhari is supporting? That's a question many inquiring minds want to know. As time goes on, we think we're going to get the answer to this question. And once we get it, we'll be happy to feed you with this information. So before we end the show of today, we want to return to South Africa. As much as South Africa is supporting Russia in the Ukrainian crisis, the people are also complaining again about foreigners. In the past, we've told you that South Africa has a lot of issues with employment. There's a lot of joblessness, and the young people are keeping the blame on foreigners. Whenever there are problems, the scapegoat becomes the foreigners. The foreigners are really working hard to make the economy of South Africa vibrant. But whenever there's problems of unemployment, they blame the foreigners. So Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa has said he was going to do something about it, but he has not done something about it yet. When is he going to be able to do something about it? And that's what we want him to handle. Don't just support Russia, a country that doesn't have anything to give you by guns. Russia has a lot of weapons. They have nuclear weapons, which they inherited from the Soviet era. But what are they going to be able to give Africa? Can they give South Africa food? Can they bring jobs to South Africa? No, they cannot. So when you're supporting Russia, just know that you are limited. What Russia can give you are arms. That's it. But we play your cards skillfully when you want to support Russia. Because Russia doesn't have much to offer the world. China at least has money. China is offering money to Africans. Russia is not offering any money. Instead, Russia takes the mineral resources in Africa for its own good. Okay? So that's what we need you to understand. Africa is wealthy, as you can see. So we're asking you to go back and read the book by Martin Meredith. Okay? Because this is a book that will really teach you the fact that Africa is a wealthy country and you have people exploiting this world from the time of the pharaohs up to today. So try to get this book and read it, and we'll really appreciate it. So we thank you very much for watching this show, and we'll say bye-bye. Medical practice software is too old. Indeed, all the programs are built on mumps, technology of the 1950s, and the programs cost too much money. Epic and Cerner cost billions of dollars. Meditech costs thousands of dollars too. In fact, that's why we created AlexiaHTC.com, a new and free EMR slash EHR for doctors. AlexiaHTC.com is built for HIPAA. Yes, magical one-screen technology, ease of use, quick charting, amazing e-prescribing, tight labs integration, multi-office difference, because we believe doctors and patients need a break today. Be the first to test drive AlexiHTC.com. You have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain. Act now. Call 240-350-1131. Alexia Care Corporation at AlexiaHTC.com. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today. <laughs>